Uniquely Omaha, he is one of the wealthiest men on the planet. When he's not busy making more money or enjoying a game of bridge, Warren Buffett spends free time talking to students. While he declines most offers to speak, the Wizard of Wall Street invites dozens of student groups to Omaha each year. Most people won't reveal their secrets. Warren says, I look at it as a surgeon at a medical school. You wouldn't hold back your best tricks and your best ideas. You would share them with your students. Students, Buffett says, are young enough to take advantage of his lessons. <laughs> well, uh, the one I've always followed is to be, to be greedy when others are fearful and to be fearful when others are greedy. Warren Buffett says that nobody knows exactly what his company, Berkshire Hathaway, is worth. But he tells students that stocks most of the time represent a good investment compared to other choices. I would go 100% into stocks. Cash is a terrible investment. Now, people are fearful and they, they feel good with it, but Wayne Gretzky said, you know, skate to where the puck is going to be, not where it is. And the puck for this country is going to be very good over time. Warren Buffett's long-term value investing, learned decades ago at Columbia University from Professor Benjamin Graham, urges calm decision-making, especially when Mr. Market panics. The explanation cannot be found in any mathematics but it has to be found in investor psychology. You can have an extraordinary difference in the price level merely because not only speculators, but investors themselves are looking at the situation through rose-colored glasses rather than dark, dark blue glasses. It instantly clicked with me that what he was saying made sense. Uh, and then the chance to uh, study under him and, and under Dave Dodd too, it, it was a different experience, but it was hugely helpful. Uh, it really, it, it shaped my professional life. I mean, he's in New York, he's at Columbia, he's, he's with the right people, he's studying uh, the right theories, um, and he's becoming uh, even better than he was before. He was a f disciple of Benjamin Graham, uh, which, which was based upon uh, investing in what we call the undervalued security. When Mr. Market becomes fearful, it's time to become greedy. But when market greed drives prices too high, become fearful. The intelligent investor ignores business news headlines, instead relying upon good data and sound judgment. Warren Buffett cannot tell you what stock prices will do this week or next, but he can predict which companies are likely to make money during the next five to ten years. Nothing is certain, Buffett warns, but the game is stacked in your favor. One thing I think Warren does different than other value investors is he also looks for the growth potential and then he has the size uh, and the, uh, the business knowledge to go in and take over other companies and then help them grow. Again, he's not interested in just buying the shares of a company. He wants to own the company and have the company grow. Buffett has made investing mistakes, but the principles work most of the time. Understand the business, look for enduring competitive advantage and management you trust. Businesses like Dairy Queen, DQ, have a moat around them because no competitors offer exactly the same product or experience. You think of having a pleasant time, you know. It doesn't have a damn thing to do whether it's this, that, or the other thing. You know, it was one of these things that, you know, it's like a, what you call a, a moment of enlightenment. Uh, suddenly it occurred to me that, hell, if you could pick up a good company for half its book value, go home tonight and, and go to sleep, and be sure that in the time uh, you were going to get some kind of benefits. Sometimes those benefits were enormous. To spend the money within a reasonable period of time. So Buffett is not only a teacher to thousands of students each year, he also helped the nation through its most serious economic crisis since the Great Depression. Unmoved by financial fads, he's doggedly sought out value, put his weight behind companies with promise, and demonstrated that integrity isn't just a good trait, it is good for business. President Barack Obama says Buffett was his most valuable economic advisor when running for president in 2008. 
I think it was both a time at which, during which um, we all needed to be calmed. Um, but at the same time, uh, you see the elements of, of teacher going on as well. Uh, you have a meeting with the president, uh, with, uh, with Geithner, uh, other people within the, the, uh, the government, the, the federal government, um, talking sense, talking um, uh, about the, the context in which uh, this, this f fiscal f calamity took place. Um, and I think that helped us all. He was capitalism's Yoda. He didn't panic. Uh, and he would say things, you know, like, you don't know who's naked till you drain the pool, and all kinds of things that he said. But he made a $5 billion investment in Goldman Sachs. Um, I mean, he, was, he was confident that we were going to get out of this terrible time, but he demonstrated that confidence with his comments. Warren Buffett was not always a great student or teacher. He learned investing through early experiences, library studies, and eventually in a graduate program at Columbia. But Buffett had a problem. He feared public speaking. He was so socially inept in groups and afraid, he says that presenting in high school and college made him throw up until he spent $100 cash on a Dale Carnegie course at the Rome Hotel in Omaha. I had just finished a Dale Carnegie course uh, which was taught by Wally Keenan out of the old Rome Hotel. And prior to taking that course, I had been absolutely unable to speak in public. And uh, after taking the course, I decided, uh, it, which had a big effect on my life, I decided that I'd better uh, get out in public and keep talking, or I would lapse back into my previous state. So I went out to what was then the University of Omaha and volunteered my services. And luckily for me, they took me up on it. In February 1951, Buffett had a brief newspaper announcement. A four-week intelligent investing course was meeting Tuesday and Thursday nights, 7 to 9 p.m., at Omaha University. Buffett's fall contract listed him as an instructor of finance. Among Buffett's professional references, Columbia Dean David Dodd. I believe that was the only class that I taught for... Uh, where I had to grade the students and so on. So I, I went into that class, and they were all, practically all of them about my age. I was the youngest looking one in the group if I wasn't the youngest. Uh, but I, uh, you know, I enjoyed it. I, I was there uh, to try and get, uh, to try and get a, a message across. A half century later, Buffett's former students remembered Buffett's brilliance and passion. Warren was just a data bank. He'd just store all this information. And I don't really relate to him uh, going to a book. I can relate to him delivering his, uh, or addressing his class and answering questions without, without uh, referencing anything. He knew what he was talking about. I was quickly a, quite an admirer of him because I, it was the first time I had ever run into anybody that explained uh, investment strategies in a way that I thought made a hell of a lot of sense. When he was teaching the class, it was like visiting with a bunch of friends. It wasn't like, you know, talking to a, to a group, making a, making a speech to a big group of people. Well, it was uh, Bob Russell was a fraternity brother of mine, and uh, I was a major in uh, sociology. And uh, so he told me about this class of investment. So I says, okay, he says, well, Warren will give you a good grade. I says, okay, I didn't know Warren at all at that time. So I took the class, didn't get the good grade because he is an honest person and he gave me what I deserved. So that's the way that, that went. I had heard about Warren's uh, financial past and the record, so to speak. And uh, when I heard he was teaching at the, at the adult school at, at OMOIU, I, I decided to take it. And I'm sure glad I did because I got to know him. <laughs> and that wasn't bad. My Aunt Alice, for example, took a very early class uh, with me, and uh, there were a lot of there were friends of mine that would uh, that would come out uh, and take those classes, and I I, mean, I I met a lot of nice people through uh, through teaching there early on. Teaching placed Buffett, the son of a broker and congressman, in front of potential clients. He convinced some of them that he knew more about investing than they ever could. They trusted him to invest their savings. 
This is someone who, who was clearly thinking in a different way than a lot of the faculty um, would have been thinking, a lot of the business schools would have been thinking. So there was a tremendous opportunity for people um, uh, to take a, a course that they wouldn't have been able to get anywhere else. You were intrigued with what he thought he could accomplish, and when he started to accomplish it, then you, you develop more confidence in, in you, that as an investment. And if you had some more money to invest, that you would likely go there with that money. You had to have $10,000 in order to invest with him. And he would, you couldn't, when you gave it to him, invest, you had no control over it. He had to say so on how he was going to invest his money. Well, he's made several people billionaires, of course, we know that since then. So, but I didn't have $100, <laughs> let alone 10000 <laughs> being a student, you know. I asked him one time also about picking stocks and he said, you're just as well off to take a dart, throw it at the Dow Jones and see where it hits and take that stock, buy it. <laughs> which is kind of an interesting one. Uh, they said they didn't always know exactly what he was talking about, but they were convinced that I knew more that. than they did about yeah. investing. Yeah, it's kind of like when I was a kid and you tried to help me with my math. <laughs> I knew he was right, I just couldn't figure out what he was doing. <laughs> we thought we were learning, but you really didn't learn until you started doing business with Warren. By 1962, the last year Warren Buffett taught at Omaha University, the April 30 to June 11 course was simply called Intelligent Investing, and he was paid $450. The timing coincided with a steel crisis that led to a brief but large drop in stock prices, the largest since the Great Depression. At about the time Buffett's last course was ending, he was interviewed in this newly discovered KMTV footage. Well, some observers from time to time say that the stock market is a forecaster of events to come. Can you predict or would you care to take a look at what you think this might be forecasting, the decline? Uh, the stock market has been a good forecaster uh, from time to time in the uh, past. It also has been a rather poor forecaster occasionally. Uh, for example, the last four or five years, the stock market has been booming along and uh, presumably forecasting better business, which has really not materialized. Corporate profits are, are not any better than they were five years ago, but stock prices are 50% uh, higher thereabouts. Uh, so maybe the stock market is really uh, correcting a previous incorrect forecast this time rather than making a new correct one. Well, in a nutshell, Mr. Buffett, can you give us uh, your opinion of just exactly what happened? What caused it? Well, there was... Uh, undoubtedly some force selling the, uh, the week uh, when the stock market hit the news. The previous week, uh, prices had declined about 6% for the week on average. And uh, there was some stock that uh, was forced upon the market both by margin calls from brokers and uh, uh, some that was uh, forced out by in, in improperly uh, secured bank loans. And this in turn set up a self-generating mechanism on the downside for a while, uh, which we may have seen the last of and which we may not have seen the last of. The interesting thing about this, that's a pretty long piece of film. Yes, it is. And it's, not edited, it's not cut. Yeah. I'm wondering if it was ever broadcast. It may not have. I wonder or perhaps yeah, it, was it was not unusual to go that long perhaps. in those days. But that's no, true. Yeah. That's true, it, but, but it's it also wrong. likely that, I mean, it's not likely, but uh, unless you have the copy of the newscast, there were things that were shot and edited and put it on a, on a showreel and, and then, then the they the everything. Yeah. I was watching for splices, and there weren't any. <laughs> so it was not edited. It, it ran. No cue marks either. By 1962, the 32 year old Buffett is worth more than $1 million, and his partnerships are valued at more than seven times his personal wealth. No, 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 no. <laughs> he never even, he never even accounted for the fact that Jesus Christ, he did do make me rich, you know. Can't believe it. <laughs> yeah, and I was one of the dummies that really didn't invest very heavily in him. <laughs> so I invested a few dollars, and two weeks later I sold it. 
and I made $15,000. I thought I was the smartest man in the world. And then I realized that I was the dumbest man in the world. If you held on to it enough, you soon became a wealthy person. You know, a successful man and all, but he, he still has that sense of humor and, and just a lot of fun. And, and then the other thing I, I think of him is how humil humil humble he is. Just, uh, just a regular guy, you know. And I think that's amazing about somebody that, you know, that has his background and his, his money and so forth. He's always got time for you, uh, which I always admired. Billions of dollars do not appear to have changed Warren Buffett very much over the years. He lives relatively modestly and tells students that he doesn't have much more than them. One of the things I'll never forget was uh, I bought a new, er, uh, we were out in California, and we'd already moved, and I ordered a new Cadillac to be delivered to Omaha. And then it was so Ginny and I flew in and uh, picked up the car, big, big old white Cadillac in those old days, they're a pretty big car. And we drove, we had an appointment to see him the next morning, an 8.30 appointment. We drove down underneath the parking in the Keywood building, I believe he's in. And uh, we got out of the car and started to walk towards the building. And here comes this little Volkswagen bug down, down, the, down the ramp. It was all muddy. <laughs> it looked like something from Tijuana, uh, you know, and here's Warren in this car. He gets out and looks at me and he says, God, I wish I could afford one of those. He said, <laughs> you know, typical Warren. My pillows and mattresses are not better. Buffett reminds students they live better than the wealthiest financiers did a century ago. Even in PBS cartoons, Buffett preaches to young people. On November 2nd, 2012, Warren Buffett hosted one of his Q&A sessions with students. On this day, 20 students, each from Columbia, Dartmouth, Illinois, Kansas State, the London Business School, Missouri, the University of Nebraska-Lincoln, his alma mater, as well as the University of Nebraska-Omaha. He's still very much an Omahaan. Um, it was like it was like talking to many people that I know in Omaha. It, you, you get into a comfort level with his conversation style and his, the, the stories he told. It, it seemed like I had known him longer than just a few minutes. I think also what was really great was his willingness to teach us, you know, not the formal teaching in a setting, but just listen to my experiences, this is what I've done. Um, and you can accomplish, you know, maybe not the same thing unless you really want to. So it was kind of putting that onus back on you, but through his life experience, I think he was really trying to teach us something that day. He has some phenomenal skill where you just want to work harder and you just want to impress him. And it's, it's nothing that he says, it's just in his actions and how humble uh, and, and just genuinely of a good person that, that he is. Warren Buffett tells his students that the basic philosophy is exactly what it was 60 plus years ago. By following Ben Graham's principles, an investor gets to buy any business that has price changes every day for irrational reasons. Buffett likes that there are no called strikes in the stock market. He says 99% of stocks on the list he does not understand, but 1% he does, and some are the right price. Uh, he's, he, he's, he's talking about some sort of simple ideas, really. And when, when we get away from that in investments, that's when we get into trouble. Buffett reminds students about Ted Williams' baseball book, The Science of Hitting. Williams identified 77 squares the size of a baseball in the hitting zone. He'd bat 400 if he swung at only pitches in his sweet zone. I don't, he doesn't lecture. He's not, you know, he, he, he doesn't, even though he knows more than everybody else he's talking to, he doesn't give that uh, feeling, I don't think, to anybody. I mean, he's, he's interested in the other people, too. He, um, it's a very conversational style. It's a very relaxed style. He's not a stuffy, uh, full-of-himself kind of guy. So I think it, it, puts, it puts the students at ease quickly, and then it, make, it just makes the whole situation pretty easy. He is so transparent. 
and he doesn't talk about all the good things that he's done and how wonderful he is and so on and so forth. So they see the complexity in his life as the complexities as we discussed. And again, that brings him closer to them, them closer to him. And so uh, as they're learning about the thought processes of somebody who's incredibly successful, they're also realizing this guy is a lot like us in many, many ways. He's just a little older than we are. Helen Wong on behalf of London Business School. Uh, we absolutely enjoyed the event. It was phenomenal and great to hear uh, Warren speak live. Uh, it was great to hear his experience over time and uh, we all very much enjoyed it. When Warren Buffett teaches students today, his lessons go beyond the market. He once sold shirts at J.C. Penney's and hated it, but found his passion with investing. I can do anything that involves making money, Buffett says. I found my passion when I was very young. Students are urged to find their passion. He doesn't ever give speeches and he doesn't ever speak to anybody who's not a student. He likes, really, he likes to talk to the students only because he just feels, I think he feels like once you're beyond that, you know, your mind is set, you're going off doing your thing, and um, if you get kids when they're young, they can still hear you. He gets a glint in his eye and he, uh, he, will, uh, he will say something and then while he's conveying that message, also slip in maybe a, 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 sh a short antidote, maybe a short story that's a little bit of humor in there. And that makes him much more enjoyable, much more approachable to the students. He kind of like wants to pass down his mentality and his, his way of life and his thinking down to our younger generation. I truly believe that that's probably the best way to do it. It's just showing how down to earth he is and how normal he is just like the rest of us. Buffett gives the students a simple test. If you could own 10% of the earnings of a classmate, who would you pick and why? You'll pick the person that other people want to work for, he answers. That's what makes a leader. It's a test for all of us, whether or not we be students at the university or running major corporations. Just as Buffett learned to teach investing from Graham's teaching at Columbia, business professors around the country now teach similar courses. At Nebraska, Omaha, a frequent CNBC analyst teaches the genius of Warren Buffett. We put together a curriculum that I sent to Warren and he reviewed it and uh, the last module is for the students after learning about his investment methods and his management methods to su suggest an acquisition idea and they last fall presented the idea to Warren at Happy Hollow Country Club um, directly to him and he gave them feedback on, his, on their acquisition ideas. So it was pretty exciting to see these principles be taught and taken to other continents and other countries. At the annual meeting each spring in Omaha, more than 30,000 investors come from all over the world. They fill the CenturyLink arena and patiently listen to Buffett and longtime partner Charlie Munger explain investing. For about six hours on the first Saturday in May, Buffett teaches in his largest classroom. You know, if I, if I was, you know, if I was measuring his IQ, it would be over 150. And God knows what it is, see? That's one of the reasons why this thing that's held down here at the uh, hall is so uh, well attended. They know they get straight answers for any question that really has any bearing on the future. Just as he tells students to know who they are, Buffett is very comfortable with his own identity and philosophy. It's not about the money, but rather Buffett's passion for playing the investment game. Warren Buffett says he was programmed to love investing and making money. Mr. Buffett, the teacher, sticks to his lesson plan. There's a tremendous feeling of, of satisfaction uh, at the end of each course and sometimes at the end of each, each lecture that you can look out into the group, you can look at it among the students and you have the sense that you know, today made a difference. It might be a really small difference, but it made a difference.